So this is the long range section at Rock Castle Shooting Park. This is over a 1,600 yard range, which is pretty awesome. And at the far end of this range, behind a hill and in a holler, is a pretty cool bay that we're gonna be using today for the Carry Trainer two-day course, which is gorgeous. And just had to come back up to the gate to get a straggler that got lost. Some people don't like to drive their vehicles. I don't know if you guys notice. I use my truck. <laughs> so here's what I'm thinking. Saturday morning, I'm in the gorgeous bluegrass state, getting to stretch the old Ford's legs a little bit here on some red dirt and gravel. Life is sweet. Look at this. Life is sweet. Right. A little creepy breathing in the background. <laughs> So if you're gonna load, lock that slide to the rear. Seat lock, tug, cycle, press check, hammer forward or tap the frame if you've got a striker gun. If your gun's loaded, you're good to go. John, you need ears, eye and ear protection, dudes and dudettes. Remember, stepping out a little bit, watch me not the target. I joined in a good spot, I got a good draw, pressed out. Do it, do it. Try to get a good, a good, watch me, watch me. Press, press, press. A good center hit like that, and then finger straight and come to that compressed ready position. It's funny, if you look at him, you would not think that he could immediately muster that erotic homosexual tone. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> do everything perfect. Good draw stroke, good sight picture. Watch the gun, not the target. If you're, and this is not, what I'm showing you is how I want you to implement this. So I've got a good grip. I start with a good draw, right? Good draw, good grip. And I'm moving my sight all the way up out of the notch, all the way over, down. You could do a figure eight. You could do up, down, left, right, up, down, left, right. And you're gonna run through a magazine. Watch the gun, not the target, ready? Lift your front sight out of the notch, lift it out of the notch, and press, press, press. These exercises are just meant to help you see your limits. It's like when you max out a bench press or when you try to run as fast as you can. Holster up, holster up, holster up. You, when you holster, so what I don't want is it's like a, you're ch like chasing a tail. The more you turn, the farther away it goes. So when you just holstered that, you ended up all the way back here. Just throw your hip forward if you need to see it. Yeah. Try it. Yeah, just because somebody might be back here later. All I'm trying to see here is at what point can I no longer get reliable hits? Watch. What's important right now? 
Master grip, draw, join, press out. I see the slide is locked to the rear, finger comes straight. I dump the magazine, I put a new one in. I had a good sight picture. I shot the amount of shots that were prescribed. Checking shit out, we're safe. Scoop it back up, set it up, come back. What's important right now? Now is this, then it's this, then it's this. Now it's this. Now it's this. For you, decock. When you're done shooting, decock. So you've got an empty gun, one in the chamber. Empty magazine, you've got one in the chamber, and you've got a full magazine in your number one magazine pouch. Yes? Yes. 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 Sights are really nothing more than a measuring tape, right? They're a, they're a, a, a indicator, like a level. Mm -hmm. You push them to their design limit. Lifted that. Once that front sight comes all the way out of the notch, you like move them past the point that they're designed to work. When you buried it or moved it left or right, same thing. And they're all different. On the whistle, you're going to draw. Speed is not a component. Speed is not a component of this. Just do it right and smooth. You're going to draw, fire one into that body piece of paper. You're going to reload, run your slide forward, and fire another shot. On the paper. On the paper. This place is beautiful, but there's ticks everywhere. There's ticks everywhere. Got it set back up, right? Yes, sir. Tell me your name again. Dave. Dave. I feel bad, guys, that I'm having a hard time with names. I think it was all the IPA and chicken last night. <laughs> all right, on the whistle. On the whistle. Do it right. It's not about speed. Do it right. You guys are going really quick. I'm gonna start filming you so we see if your really quick looks really good. I see a couple guys over here that feel that they're lightning. Let's get some camera angles on them. Come on dudes and dudettes, hurry up. It shouldn't take but one second per round times three magazines at 15 rounds each. Do the math, quick, go. So here's what we're gonna do. We'll come back up to this distance. V up so you can watch me. V up? Like like geese. <laughs> Good solid draw stroke. You're going to present the gun out to the target. And here's how you're going to start. Oh my God, why is he doing more of this shit? It doesn't make any sense from what I was told while I was in the Boy Scout camp. That's not what we're doing. <laughs> we're going to teach you how to shoot while you're moving. And this is how we're going to start. I actually picked this up from Frank Proctor. It's a great... It's a great way of learning to see what you need to see. So basically stick to stick. I swing about six inches or a foot past it. You guys got eyes and ears on? Yep. Yep. Watch me, not the target. Watch me, not the target. So my, I've got a good sight picture and my goal When I see my target's transition paper, press, mm -hmm. press. I'm not, I'm not doing this. That's not shooting and moving. That's moving the gun and stopping. So even if it's downrange, downrange. Even if this is all the movement that you can start out with because it's overloading your. Sensors. I was gonna say that sometimes when we do stuff that goes so against, what are we? What are we? been trying to do we've been trying to hold the gun as still as possible right now we're doing the opposite so your brain is going to be like stop it dummy and i'll be like you're not dumb you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and you're a good person i think a great way to start an after lunch routine is with some jumping jacks let's knock 15 out clean go go get your guts back moving this That's, there's a little bit of a parlor trick to that. What do I mean by a parlor trick? So some of my buddies, grandmaster level shooters, will do things like, you guys know what a bill drill is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Bill Wilson, if you don't know, created the bill drill. Bill Wilson of Wilson Combat, one of the founders of IDPA, the kind of originator of it. It was, if you don't know, it's six shots at seven yards from concealment 
a stellar time is two seconds or less. Shot into the A zone. The A zone is on these targets. Now you can't see it from the back. It's about six inches wide and about 11 inches tall. Right. So from that, that farther uh, uh, distance, draw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Or one, two, three, four, five, six. So you got to have about a second draw stroke and your shots are. That's good. Yeah. It's kind of a parlor trick though. In the sense of you are sitting there and the distances and everything are so worked out that if a lot of those guys, if you change the target to a paper plate or a person's ball caps, something, they're so tuned in on that A zone yeah. that their brain just knows, put the gun about here at this distance and we're good. I'm not seeing my sights anymore. When I just went boom, 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 mm -hmm. all I'm really doing is I know, and it's it's a fact of demoing it so much, right. that all that's really happening is I'm timing like a metronome. It's cheating. But, eyes and ears, this is what this becomes. So, we are going to draw, fire one, reload two into the paper. Got it on the whistle. Ready? One, reload two. Keep it on the paper. We can get away from the, the parlor trick by just spacing distance. So then it becomes. Yeah. Look left and right. You know the you know the drill. Your gun should still be out. I want you to bend over and scoop your gear. Muzzle downrange, John. Your feet are not good targets. Sir, I love you. Your arm is not a good target. So, guys, if you're bending down, don't muzzle me because I'm about to bend down. Look at me. This is not, unless I'm pointing and I am extremely aware of where that is, I, I don't want to be doing stuff like this or like this. Mm -hmm. I keep saying it. Be aware of it. Set the gun back up. And the idea is not that I'm hunting the targets. I'm not shooting until I get in front of it. Right. The, the point here also, not a tactic. We're not assuming bad guys are gonna line up. Right. We're learning how to see our sights and press the trigger when the sight crosses the target. Any questions on that? Make your family proud. How are you guys doing down here? Good. Did you make your headshots? You nervous right now? Are you guys all watching him? Yes. Yeah! Good. Noah. And again, not a tactic. This isn't some like technique where you're just gonna run past bad guys to shoot them. Right. We're just learning to see our sights. That said, no gun. Kevin's the bad guy and he's doing some shit. Might it be a tactic? Sure. Yeah, now, why do you guys suppose that Matt turned one hand? Because so you told him to? And I did not. Okay. So check it out. A couple of you decided that this was a good option. A couple of you decided this was a good option. A couple of you decided, and part of this depends on the way your body turns. Right. You know, if he's got a busted disc, this may have been much better. So 
I pointed out a few of you, a couple of you seem to naturally just move how it felt the most comfortable. You go in the direction that your hips are facing. Right. You know, if I had to choose between getting a hit in training, we're not talking about fighting, in training, between getting a hit and not knowing how I did it or understanding what happened or missing and knowing exactly why I missed, I would always choose the second because it means I'm being aware of what's happening. So the path of travel was this way. Some of you like we're doing this or this, all of which is gonna just get you tripped if we had to move quick. Your brain, if you are paying attention, will know now, 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 now. You get it? Yeah. So I'd rather that because it's easy to be like, okay, good, I got the hits, screw it. You're not learning anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're not programming in what needs to be programmed. Dominate your gun. You're training with something that, same thing that we did earlier with the note card, I'm sorry, the, the printer paper, you've now got that posty as your target. Eyes and ears, okay kids? You've also gotta let people know you're the good guy. You're in control of the situation. I'm not shooting things that shouldn't be shot. I'm not muzzling things that shouldn't be muzzled. I'm not uh, losing my shit where I no longer can focus on everything else going on. Get to that end of that line. You know, I'm doing whatever I need to do with my gun because it's an instrument of death. Draw your weapons, present them downrange. Do a press check. Let's see if you're all loaded. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yep. Good. Good carpenter always has nails, and if you're carrying it to save your life, you had better be coming back to the holster loaded. Don't get fixated on looking good doing the drill. Think about, like I said, what's important now. He knew he needed to go this way. He figured with his body, this was gonna give him the best option of doing that. Yeah? Yeah, so, so I wouldn't cross my feet. Yeah. So we're gonna come back the other way now. You'll feel it completely different as all right-handers. Now, this sucks. So you may have to either rotate the gun over into Johnny Cool. Johnny Bravo. This was uh, John Wick. Paul John Castle. Wick. Was that his name, Paul yeah. Castle? Paul Castle. From, uh, what was the name of his system? Okay, ready? Yes, sir, on you. Did you go through your proper procedure of insert seat lock tug cycle or cycle or cycle? Yeah? Yes. Did you all do that? Yes. Where was his sights when that shot broke? Right there. There. Right, right there. there. Right there. Yeah, yeah man. I was going too right. fast. There. Where were they when that one went off? Right, right there. there. Right there. Right there. Right there. How about that one? Right there. And that? Right there. And these? And right there. You guys get the point, right? I'm not yeah. being a smart ass. Yeah. Little targets, you start to realize your capabilities. And if yeah. you push yourself to do this, if we did this for two hours, just sat here and shot this, and then we switch back to this, you'd yeah. be like, you know, just hose fest. It'd be like nothing. Right. And I show, I love this kind of stuff because you can stand at a static range, that indoor range that doesn't let you do the stuff we're doing, and you mm -hmm. can do this. Nobody's going to stop you from doing this if right. you're not being crazy. Right. And you're getting the visual input that you need. We've been out here training all week, weekend. You're going to walk into your place of business. And within 30 seconds, somebody's going to walk in shooting at you. Who wins that fight? I do. I do. Who does? I do. I hope you're not upset, you're not upset that I'm paying extra no, attention to you. No, no, no. So your gun right now is holstered with the safety off, which is fine because you decocked. Right. So technically with this gun, you could load it, decock, and then take the safety off. So that when you draw, all you do is press the trigger. Okay. 
it's safe to carry like that. Yeah. You just don't want to carry it like that with the hammer back. Take your life, take your shit through violent action. Who tells them when they stop? I do. I do. Do you though? Yeah. Who tells you when you quit? I do. Who I tells do. you when you quit? Only you. Who tells you when the bar's too heavy? Only you. Nobody. Right on the target. Go empty. You don't get to tell him. You may think through some reasoning or logic of, of uh, some warrior mindset bullshit. I tell him when to quit. But until his spirit is broken or his body is physically no. not working, right. he can keep going just as you have a choice to. That's right. Start thinking now, I win. That gun comes out of the holster, I win. That sight press, or that, that sight picture in trigger press could be the difference between you winning or not. Between your wife or kid or coworker or parishioners that you protect or the people in the public that you may intervene to save. Have you guys like what we're talking about now, have you weighed these things out in your head? Can I draw a gun and shoot a human being square in the chest multiple times? Watch their shirt pop? Possibly see blood? Yes. Possibly be responsible for other people in the vicinity? I mean, you guys weighed that? Holster up. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Draw, and you're gonna fire one. Come back to the holster. On the next whistle, we're gonna do two. On the next whistle, so on and so forth. The point is not all perfect hits, too. You are pushing yourself. You are pushing yourself. All right, if you missed, everybody's doing it again until we all get a single hit. Everybody hit? Who missed? Two hits. Single shot one more time. Three, three. Good stuff, Mindy. Here's what we're gonna do next. You are picking your sights up. Right. Once you decide that you're ready to fire, I'm starting to apply pressure. The double action's great for you to see this. Watch the hammer, right? Watch the hammer. Watch the hammer. Yeah. Yes. Put your hands like this in front of yourself. Look at your hands, not at me. Relax your hands, and now take your index fingers and pretend like you're stroking a trigger. Watch your hands. What's happening? Observe. Stroke them all the way. What do you see? Yeah, interdigit response is what some people call that. Interdigit limb movement. When you take a baby's hand and do this, what happens?
okay, I'm gonna change this up again. I see a little bit of cheatery going on here. I'm gonna set this camera up because then we can call liar, liar, pants on fire. Put your butthole on an electric wire. That's how we sang it, and I got in trouble. As we're holding the gun yeah. and we're pressing that trigger, oftentimes we're like, all right, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, and we squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. Watch my muzzle. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna squeeze these fingers. Watch the muzzle. See it? Yeah. I'm barely squeezing and it's moving at at these distances, you're gonna miss by an inch or two. Now I'll really squeeze with this hand a good grip. You don't see it anymore. Yeah. This grip's overcoming the milking action. Right. So immediate fix for when you guys are these guys got some red ass group, they're fist-sized group, but they're to the low and left of the target. So the immediate fix for that is lock down good with that non-dominant hand. Mm -hmm. What's the problem with that? As soon as you get rid of this hand, you're now you're Johnny Milkerson again. We just want to think about not moving anything else. So our grip needs to be, probably the number one thing you can do is consistency in your grip. So your focus, Mike Seeklander, as he describes it, this is my words, he, it, I like to at, tell you what's important now through each of those steps, mm -hmm. but as you're pressing, you have to become cognizant of the fact that your fingers are moving or they're not moving, and of course you want to tell them don't move. <laughs> so we're at like 47 yards. Don't shoot like crazy. A couple people stand behind the shooter to let them know if they hit, because it's hard to hear and it's hard to see at this distance because your muzzle covers so much of the gun. You know what I'm saying? Eyes and ears, faster. Show me, Waylon. Waylon stands with a swagger, man. He's okay, 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 okay. You're losing the sight of what's happening here. Good grip. Good grip. Compress in. This is all I want you to do, from here to here. That grip doesn't fall apart and you're not racing the gun back in. Do it again. Show me your grip. Okay. Your grip should not be... One and done. Show me. It's not faster, it's not hurry the whole thing up. If you're drawing, pressing the gun out, stopping, and then getting a sight picture, you're, you're negating the purpose of the drill. The point is, is that you are taking all that time out right. of refining sights. At this distance, I don't have any more ammunition on me, but if I did, it would look something like this. Watch the hammer. See? Not a, and, and, and again, well that's stupid. I'll just get the gun up, get a sight picture. You might not be able to. Show me. Where did that last one go? Remember, you're not dragging the gun and you're not in a race to get off the target either. Show me one more time. Aim at the top of the steel. Show me. Okay, show me. Purpose here isn't to try to throw it out there. You you see in the sights, see in the sights as the trigger's coming in. Boom. Try it again. All right, holster up. We got guns out. Stay, stay, 
stay still for a moment. We got guns out. Holstered. Holstered. Scoop your gear. Let's top them off. Watching you boys on camera here. You know, my little file. What are you gonna do when you get back to the hotel? My little file. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, my little file. Stop. What has to happen to get a hit? Lights on target. Master grip, good sight so alignment, good to steady trigger, trigger squeeze point. without disturbing the sights. So, two things. Put your sights on what needs a hole in it when you press the trigger without moving them. Right. Yep. None of your explanations were wrong. Just, you know, if you start thinking about all that stuff, this needs to stay here, don't move it, back, 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 boom. This needs to stay here, back, 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 boom, right? right. All the other stuff's right. Like, how do you drive your car? Okay, well, I get into it, I put my butt in the seat, I adjust the seat, I check the mirrors, I go into my pocket, I find the keys, shit, they're not in my pocket, they're in my briefcase, I get the keys, I find the correct key, I put it in the ignition. At the same time, I'm coming, you can understand my point? Yeah. yeah. Where if you'd say, I get the car, turn the key, and I go. <laughs> you don't need to tell me all that bullshit. Right. Nope, it's all accurate from both sides of the equation. All you need to know is that the front sights need to be on here. So, my good buddy, Bob Housing, I'm moving this because you got a miss close to it, so I want to make sure that you see it. National champion, awesome shooter, great guy. Bob likes to say, start and end all training with accuracy. See why? Because if you can't hit anything, then the rest of it's for naught. What's the purpose of these guns? To hit what you're aiming at. What's the <laughs> What's the purpose of a framing hammer? To drive a framing nail, right? The purpose of these is to shoot a nine millimeter or a twenty-two projectile, and that's it. If you use it. You could use a framing hammer to break ice, to kill somebody, to drive a big nail, a little nail, a roofing nail, to break a window, to tear frickin' siding off a house. You choose what to use it for, but its intent is to put, when you read a review on a gun, you read the writer's idea, and then what's the last thing? Accuracy. What group was it capable of at said distance with said ammo? Right. That's really what we wanna know. You buy a hot rod, I wanna know how fast it goes, zero to 60, and what the quarter mile time is, right? Right. right. You buy a slalom car, I want to know how many G's it pulls as you're as you're making hard turns. The point of these is to hit shit. So let's reinforce that. On you, tightest group you can muster. At this distance, you guys, none of you should have a group larger than that post-it note. Every round, you're accountable for it. Sights go onto the target. Your focus then shifts to pressing straight back without disturbing. If you get shaky, just stop. Just stop. Yeah? Yeah. Yes. Ready? No time constraint. Tightest group you can possibly muster. That is the pitter patter of windshield wipers. Another day of class in the rain. But you know what? Dynamite day. We're at Rock Castle Shooting Center, which is outside the Mammoth Cave National Park in Kentucky. Awesome place. Had a fantastic day. The takeaway, if I had the synopsis for the whole day for these students that fought it out in the rain, is this. I would rather you got really good at understanding why you missed than hitting and not knowing how you did it or why. Think about that. Not a bad view out the window here. Look at that.
carpets are new, beds new and clean, sheets smell clean, air conditioner blows cold. All right, so just like them, you guys are gonna run it dry with your gun out at a compressed ready. On the whistle set, towards the target. Start moving towards the target. And that gun is gonna be presented and you are gonna be pressing, pressing, pressing. Yep. Yep. You're sure. not really shooting at this point though, but you can say bang, bang, bang. Ready? Yep. Make sure that you can see your sights, John. You guys comfortable? Yep, sir. All right, so from the compressed ready. Only hits matter. Ready? Ready. It's gonna give you a chance to give this person a command to de-escalate. What would you tell somebody that you might have to shoot? Stay back. Yeah. Hey man, get back. Get back! I don't want me! On the whistle is your command to move to the left and draw and fire. I want to hear you. Come on, man, get back. You're not talking to me, you're talking to that target. Hey, man, look. All right, we're having a problem with this. Watch me. Hey, man, no, dude, I told you I don't want you. No, no! Ready, guys? Ready. Sorry. So on the whistle, start moving. Keep that gun compressed in until you're three, four, five feet off the target where that target couldn't grab it. a little adrenaline dump. Yeah! Woo! Woo! Get keyed up, kids. Get keyed up. The whistle keeps screwing my draw stroke. Ready? I don't hear you. Yeah, I'm ready! All right, on the whistle, you will draw and start moving. Take a couple steps back, please. Let's square up right here. All right. All right. Tack mag, tack mag, tack mag. It is your job as somebody carrying a weapon to keep it in a condition that it will serve you to save your life. All right, come on, stay back, man. I don't want to go. Stay away. Stay away. Get your hands up in a defensive posture this time, in a position that if you had to fight with somebody or if somebody was being. No, I ain't. No, no! Ready? <laughs> Move! Throw. What's really cool about this ammo is in this little tiny pistol, there's almost zero velocity loss over this full size pistol. We don't have a chronograph here, but what we'll do just for the it is I'll shoot one out of this we'll see where it is and we'll mark it and then I'll put one into the longer barrel and we'll, we'll test it I'll shoot low right on this one it looks like a fairly clean section of gel ready eyes and ears If those guns are going empty, they need to be reloaded immediately. All right, let's take a peek. So there it is. And look at the depth. It's all the way back where the, that fancy HST went. We'll cut that one out of there. I'll shoot one over into this section of the block and I'll shoot it out of the big boy 
full size Beretta, okay? okay? So you see the one there. These are the things that we said need to become automatic responses. And that's done through training. You're not gonna fix it all this weekend, but the next time you're on the range and your gun and the slide locks to the rear, dump the magazine. And even if you don't have a new magazine, wherever you would carry a magazine, train. You may have seen me do it at least once, pretend to grab a magazine that doesn't exist on my body. It's gotta be automatic. So bottom left now. All right, so bottom left. So now you, we've taken away from you that really nice, that really nice <coughs> thing to stare at and aim at, yeah? Yeah. yeah? yeah. So significantly shorter barrel on one, right? Mm. Yeah. And yeah. About the same depth of the block. They both pass through multiple layers of cotton. Go ahead and hold those or leave them right there. We'll line them all up here. Two Super Bell rounds. They all, these all had very similar penetration. And then the critical defense, right? And which was the over penetrator. Uh, that, that one we found on the ground, right? Yeah. 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 So that one punched all the way through. How old are tourniquets? Do you guys know? Ancient. Ancient. Spartans carried leather straps with a windlass. Situation. I don't want to fight with you, man. I don't have it. Take my money. <laughs> Just don't take the girl. <laughs> skeletons found buried with them. They knew that if the red stuff leaked out, that death was imminent. Yeah. Hey! You're just, you're just making space. Making space hey. and getting a couple hits. Hey, this is aggressive. Look at me. Some of you look like this. No, look at me. This is what some of you are doing. I just explained that we're trying to de-escalate a fight. Hey, man, I don't want me. This, I don't want any. <laughs> yeah, you do. You I'm look like you do. In this position, I'm just, dude, I don't, I don't have it. Take it. Take your parking space. I didn't girl. She smells. I'm leaving. <laughs> and you're not looking for an opportunity to fight. It's that perhaps this dude decided to charge you or whatever. Just, you know, get your head into it. Let's go. One of the main reasons that this is so important for us, besides things like car accidents, Touch it. now you're starting to feel it, violence. My friend Jared Reston calls it flipping the switch. Is that in a shooting scenario, people get holes in them. In a mass shooting scenario, a lot of the people that die are dying from blood loss. And the teachers or the people at the church or the people wherever this happened don't know what to do. Boston bombing. People bled on the street and nobody knew what to do. <coughs> what happened in uh, the Pulse nightclub in Florida. Yeah. All of those scenarios, people would have lived had two things happen. One, somebody neutralized the threat a lot faster and two, stop blood from leaking out of their body or somebody else's. This time, this time your two or three body shots are not gonna work because you don't realize that this mofo has a piece of body armor on. Number one thing is what when you're bleeding? Pressure though, right. pressure. So I like to think about it as a garden hose or any hose. What happens when you're spraying the lawn and your hose gets freaking kinked? The water stops. So that's called a stop gap. So you, if you carry a tourniquet, <coughs> it should be carried in this position. You see, if you watch a, you see a cop walking around like with this on him, mm -hmm. somebody did not teach him correctly because now they can't even deploy the tourniquet. And I tell you what, you start doing like drills for time, 
and somebody's carrying this and they're trying to get that tab off which they can't get off so NAR he mentioned North American Rescue they're a sponsor of ours they supply and manufacture these don't buy them on Amazon buy them from North American Rescue there's hundreds of Chinese manufacturers that make this shit and it looks almost the same but it's not Hey man, don't hey you guys, this is what I hear right now. No I, 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 I just like a little murmury, kind of a murmury, big murmur. Wrong person. A couple other tourniquets out there that are that are useful. This one is the tourniquet of choice. So just buy it. I mean, the rats is pretty good too. Although a lot of guys don't like them because they're so narrow right. that they crush tissue. So. All that being said, what's cool about these is they're wide enough that they don't cause massive tissue damage and they do what needs to be done. How, how long do you think you can leave one of these on before you start to have issues with dead tissue? I want those head hits. If you miss, you make them up. You guys all should have between four and six shots into that white box. So two to four hours is about the average. Two hours. If I put this on one of you right now, it doesn't take us 20 minutes to get somewhere. That's it. You're fine. So there's still lots of doctors in, in um, this is marked training too. So when you train with these, you don't use them. You buy a couple of them. ER docs still cut these off of people coming in. What the f who put this on? Them? <clears throat> Stuff starts spraying out. Like, uh, I would rather you put one on. You might not even see blood. There, the limb can be amputated and there's no blood. Yeah. What? That's that vasoconstriction we talked about. But all of a sudden, it might be five or ten minutes later, you get blood pumping and pouring. You could preemptively, you could see a big gash and not see a lot of blood. I could set this up and get it on there like ready to go, but not tighten it. You could also have somebody shot and not see any blood, and it could be uh, 10 minutes later have their leg look like a balloon because they're bleeding internally. Yeah. For years, they were taught to put it two to three inches above the wound site. Now we put it high and tight. So these, these areas right here, I can't turn it <laughs> in this. So he mentioned packing wounds earlier. I'll touch on that briefly. So these are for limbs. Think about single bone versus two bone. So we got an ulna and a radius. We got a tibia and a fibia. We got a femur, we got a humerus. So if I compress, that's a pipe and that's a bone. I can compress that pipe against the bone, right? And kind of crush it down. Yep. I got two bones and I got a pipe. The bones, my two bones in my lower extremity or my two bones here are gonna stop that compression from happening. You tracking? Tracking. So you just go up high and crush everything down to the bone. How tight? Be aggressive, be, be aggressive, be aggressive, be, be aggressive. Move whichever way you want. Control your muzzle in time and space because there may be friends of yours out here shooting and I do believe that there are because we've been together for a day and a half. <laughs> Till the bleeding stops. It will hurt. So, how do you put it on? Easiest way, so I'm carrying it like so. And we can imagine a million scenarios. I need to put it on my left arm. I'm gonna grab it, I'm gonna throw it out. I'm gonna pull it up my arm. And you want this, if possible, if you're mindful enough, that tab towards the middle of your body because I can pull towards me. It's hard to pull that way, right? So I'm pulling, pulling, pulling. And I want to make that as tight as possible to begin with. I'm going to now, Start my crankage. And that's one full revolution. And can I get another? Can I get another? Oh, yeah. yeah. Pull that through. Come on, boy. And time. There's probably 30 seconds. I definitely have a good check for a pulse. Good hits, Charlie. Good hits. Nice job. I got myself good. I'll have a bruise after that. So we'll leave it on for a minute. You'll see this hand start to get a little white. Like when you're a kid and you rubber band yourself. You see guys train with tourniquets. Got it really good over a or two. Super simple though to apply that. 
I have now occluded all blood flow from here to there. Yep. What's that? Starting to see if color color change. So how do you check for blood flow? Simple way is refill. capillary refill. So pinch this finger, watch what happens to the, do it to yourself. Pinch it and you watch it immediately refill. Watch this one now. <laughs> oh. oh, oh, gross. It's not refilling. See, it's turning like green. All right, I'm taking it off. Uh, it hurts. And I'm gonna reset it up through about six, seven inches, back onto itself. These things last it for a couple months of training and then they're, they're ready for the garbage. Cool, cool. And it's reset. You just shot that your left hand was basically out there holding it like a dead leg same thing so i need it i'm going to assume that if my leg i can't stand now the easiest thing is to break this apart you're going to feel like it's something that you're going to want to just leave it together but if you're and you're not super flexible fighting it you might have heavy clothes on if you've got a phone or something in your pocket, that phone could 100%, look how much I can tighten that just without even touching the windlass, that phone could stop this thing from clamping. You tracking? Yeah. A yeah. pocket knife, a lighter. <sighs> time. Why are we noting time? Because we want to know. If you don't know, that's okay. You're not dead. Right? Right. You you die of bleeding to death. <laughs> you can live without a leg. Can I get up from this position? Probably. In our three day class, we'll, we put these on and then we fight, fight to our feet and keep going. Right? Yep. That's what T Triple C is. It's tactical combat casualty. So you're learning to learning to deal with possible threats as well as stopping yourself from bleeding to death. Super heroic to uh, be found slumped against the tree in the schoolyard where you stopped the bad guy in a pool of your own blood. It would be a lot cooler to find you alive with a tourniquet on saying I got the bad guy, right? right. And thankfully I spent 30 bucks and learned how to use it. He's got a knife, he's got a knife! friend of mine, firefighter, lives in a rural area near me. His neighbor, he hears his neighbor screaming for help. His daughter, who was like seven or eight, climbed the chain link fence in the backyard, slipped, fell, you know, the tops of the chain links, yep. hooked her brachial artery and like ripped it out of her arm. So dad clamped it, stop gap, pressure. Dan, my friend, had him in his pocket all day long. It's like we put our wallet and keys. He throws that TQ in his pocket. Walked right up. Shit, shit, shit. Fight! <laughs> Ready? Oh, still fight. Hey, still fight. Ready guys, eyes and ears? Eyes and ears. ears. Stand by. Let's take you take this and I will grab the block. Some pretty serious cavitation from that, but it went through and through. You can see the hole. Let me 
What are those? 240 or something? Three hundos. There is no allowed with this. You're gonna face up range. I'm gonna give you the command. Just watch me. I'm just telling you you're gonna be facing up range. So we'll be right up close. And I'm gonna give you the command and you're gonna draw and fire, okay? Right. right. If one of you decides to draw your gun, like this and turn, oh. you're leaving, you're done. No refund, lose our number, all of us, but you're not gonna do that. It would make the most sense from a speed standpoint to turn which way? To the right. right. Well, I would say the side your gun's on, right. which for all of us is right-handed. Right. So I can get my gun here. You guys are gonna draw and shoot while you're moving. Finger off the trigger. Now yep. we're moving safe because we're having to cover four or five yards. So fingers off the trigger as we're moving. You're not decocking. I'm just making the gun safe, as in no trigger finger. No issue with you gaining access to the gun. It does not come out of the holster until you have turned and are facing the target. This is a bit of a rangeism because do not do what I'm about to do. I'm just showing you I could do this safely, right? I was totally safe in that presentation. We're not there. So don't get fixated on that. It actually could be really beneficial to you to turn around with that gun already drawn. So right. the first thing they sees is, oh, oh. <laughs> Wrong guy. Kidding Sorry. about that whole knife thing. Forget that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's try it dry. I want your gun to come out. Just don't shoot. Ready? Right. Go for it. I got to grab my whistle. <laughs> Stop stopping. Try again. Ready? On the whistle. Everybody being safe? Yep. You guys see anything unsafe back there? Go ahead, Waylon. Waylon. Keep that gun up, finger off the trigger. Mount that gun again, young lady. That you felt your grip come to shit, your hands getting tired? Holster slow, holster slow. Pull your hips back a little bit. Keep it tight, keep it tight. Back on your heels there, young man. You're not looking at your sights.
Ready? Who's gonna win? While you're moving. Stand by, Noah. Stand by. Hey, listen to me. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. 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 See your sights. See your sights. I didn't. I didn't initially, but now I did. See your sights. If you're not seeing them, you're probably gonna miss. That didn't rhyme at all, and it's kinda out of tune. Ready? You must shoot the torsos while moving. You must shoot the torsos while moving. You must shoot the balloons from the semicircles at the back of the range. You must traverse to the back of the range with your muzzle in a safe direction. If you don't, you're DQ'd. Shooter's ready. Muzzle, 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 muzzle. You got a chance. Sounded so cute. Move! See your sights. See your sights. See your sights. See your sights. Ooh, a good one. Dude, we could totally make a song up about that. Okay. From, you see, know, your like, sights, yeah. see your sights. See your sights. See your sights. It's like that from uh, Beauty and the Beast. Mm -hmm. Put your bullets to the test. <laughs> We'll do your best. We'll do our very best. <laughs> do Control that gun and get her holstered up. You guys having fun? Yes. Yeah. Is this boring you? No. I tend to ask that question because I just sometimes, especially with you Southerners, you're also like serious. Turn your hips the other way. More. Ah. He's like sinew and muscle. Don't watch her. Totally not. Dominate that gun, get it topped off, holstered up. Do it to it. Ooh. 
Finger straight when you are not shooting. What, what's up with that Charlie's Angels low position? I don't know. Stop it. What's up with that grip? There you go. Come on, get it, get it, get it. Those were hits. Move. You got one hit. Hit. Gun's about to go empty. I just got hit by a chunk of rock. You got you got a malfunction there. Cycle the slide. Cycle the slide before you put the ammo in. How does he see these things? Chamber one. Get the hit! Get the hit! Get the hit! See your sights! See your sights! See your sights! On you, Matt. Keep going, fight through it. Good shoot and keep going. Noah, who wins? I'll win. Break. No need to, don't, what's more important, picking up an empty magazine or holstering a loaded weapon? Holstering loaded weapon. Yeah, so prioritize what you're doing with your time. Keep going, fight around it. 
pay attention. All right. So this is how you did that whole thing like this, just with that finger floating. What is that lady on your arm? Is she a temptress? Look at that, look at your grip. Get that hand up high. Yeah. Safety's on on that blaster, right? All right, make sure you advance the mag. Now, don't, I believe that. You're going to show me, I believe it. Get the hits. Again. Mount it again. All right, that grip's better. Your last grip after that load, mount the guns. <coughs> the last grip after that load was about like that. Come on, get the hit. See your sights, man. All right. Control that gun, dominate it, advance a magazine to the forward position. Do not put that diminished mag, your front mag's the diminished one. Do the last one? Yep. Do it to it, bro. Yeah. You know who's another SF dude? that became a grandmaster level shooter, Frank Proctor. Frank has a saying that you people would like. He says, let it do. Let it do. Let it do. Saying, let your subconscious do what it does. Let it do what you taught it to do. Reload, reload, dominate that gun!
Well, for me, it's probably different than most everybody else here. That's all that matters. But I'm, I'm learning how important it is to the mechanics of loading, unloading, um, you know, the, the safe holstering, everything that is safety. Supportive of the... The, the, the tool around me realizing how important that is. I'll tell you what, every one of them realizes and after being with you how important it is. And the grip, how important a good, yeah. firm, strong grip is on the gun and the positioning. Right on. Now you know. The more you know. The more you know. Check it out. So. Point shooting is just like throwing something. My thumbs are going to index towards that target. I'm just going to, I'm not going to do anything weird. I'm just going to draw my gun and I'm going to come to this, turn my ear curl on, this relaxed position. See that? Yep. My thumbs are just pointed right at the target. Side alignment. Sight picture. Thank you. I notice more of a timeout. Start over and say, My name's Charlie, and once upon a time I benched 713 pounds and was a world champion for two years. And go. Put the finger on the trigger. You're pointing your thumb at the center of that seal. I just want to make sure none of you are shooting over the berm. You look, you look definitely in good shape. Press, press, press. My name's Charlie, and I've been 713 pounds. It's a world record for two years. You were so serious about it, too. And then a guy beat you by what? Half a kilo, one pound. Who hit, who missed? I missed. All right, so here's where this exercise goes. What'd you take away? Uh, I, like you said, uh, throwing the f Frisbee, just some things are more autonomous. Yeah. Today I noticed go. that, yeah. Just let it go. Yeah. That's, I think, what, that's part of what Frank's saying. Now, let me that let it do. But like what you're talking about, John, hey, I've never shot this gun. I've never used this holster. It's okay, man. Let it do. You have to sit there and consciously program. That's why I'm so specific about remove the source of ammunition. Lock the slide to the rear. Cycle, cycle. Visually and physically inspect. Hammer down. Thumb check. Holster. How many times have you heard me say it? One round at a time. Go ahead. I think more so when you're moving, not having tunnel vision and being aware, like the barrels, knocking, not knocking into the barrels, but also being aware of what's in front of you. I've learned how important it is to have a system <laughs> as far as like how you load the gun, manipulate your weapon and how you talked about the little kid shooting a squirt gun yeah. with no sights. Like when we were up close, even though we were a couple yards, just trusting, you know, trusting what your body can do. Yeah. And I noticed I hit a lot more than, than not. How about you, brother? Uh, it's not so much part of the actual class, but the medical side of it, as far as being prepared for blood loss and you know injury stuff like that. So you took away in 15 minutes at lunch something that was valuable. Yes. Good. I like that. You guys all try that? Yes. Sir. yes. Sir. Watch me, not the target. Watch. Good draw. Yep. Here's a, a tip I'll give you. The, whatever hand your gun is in, I'm only stepping back with this foot. Well, I'm going to start here. It's just to put that foot forward. Okay? Okay. Just helps me control the gun. If I'm here, it's going to work. But here, a little more weight in front of the gun. Eyes and ears. Watch ears. me, not the target. Watch me, not the target. So wait, this is crazy. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh 
my God. Right in the middle. Just drive it out, put the sights on the target. Dad? Um, I work with my two boys, <laughs> which is super cool. And we work, and we work hard. I took away from this the enjoyment of just being with my boys. I knew and you were them learning say something. something. Like that. No, I'm an old guy, and I try to be safe. I'll never be a great shooter. I was just out here trying to have fun, but I learned a lot. You did great. That's not true. You 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 did great. Did you hit? Did you hit? Yes, yes. or no? Respond yes. yes. affirmatively. Yes. 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 Finger on the trigger. Slap out. Come to the wall. Press. Press. Sir. I found that really sometimes I just need to let things happen. Like uh, when we were doing the little competition, I noticed that I was faster and more accurate when I wasn't trying to over concentrate and overthink it. Yeah. So you've got body weight forward. Look at me. You've got body weight forward. Now take your off hand. This is a marksmanship technique, possibly not a fighting technique because your other hand is either injured or preoccupied. But from a strict marksmanship standpoint, bring that chest, make either a fist or place it on your chest and keep that side of your body tight. I am now got my body locked out. I'm strong. I'm behind the gun. And I press, 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 press. A lot of those were really close together, weren't they? Yes. They were. Why? Because yeah. that's where the sights were. Like I've never almost ran and hit a target, but my first. Sorry, say again, please. <clears throat> I've never ran almost ran and hit a target but yet after i dropped the popper my first target i was moving faster than i thought i was engage the target actually hit it now of course i fell apart on the second one but hey <laughs> gotta practice We're moving there check this out i have been in classes with dudes that take 20 minutes to explain how to get the gun from one hand to the other watch this is awesome <laughs> no joke Depending on the hand size, you can either you can either open the gun up depending on your grip strength and hand size. Some guys let it kind of fall forward where they can get up under the beaver tail. Don't overthink it. And you're the one that doesn't like to be talking to people. I learned that when I'm trying to do things perfect, I tend to do it worse. Well, I took away uh, yesterday. I was pretty shaky when I got up on the line. Uh, just nerves getting to me. But uh, I came back in today with a different mindset. Slowed down. Just focused a little harder. Took it a little slower. And I started making hits. You said I'm an Army veteran. I can do this. Channel the little two lamb I see. Yes, sir. Hold that up. Yeah. Have I talked to you guys about stance at all? Not really, just a little bit about some forward weight bias. Watch so you can see me. Watch so you can see me, right? So. Right on the other leg. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. It is. Gun's not knocking me over. We spent all this time on forward crouch, ass cheeks back. It's bullshit. Look. Look, I'm going to go as deep as I can. There are millions of gun owners. 1% of them maybe does training like we're doing. Maybe. Yeah. Like, guys jump into this business, like, one of you probably will teach somebody what you learn, and then do. <clears throat> good at it and there they get a curriculum or some message they want to pass on they start teaching there's millions of gun owners thus i have millions of potential customers i venture to say that like if i tried to put a class on here again this year i couldn't fill it you guys were all that signed up right and it was booked for a year yeah and that's just now that's me if two lamb came here or kyle lamb or pat mcnamara some people would be like i want to go see that guy so it's not just about me. There's a very small percentage of people that actually train, which most people say, well, that's Kentucky. Everybody has guns. They'll come to class. 
They won't because they think, I grew up, my granddaddy taught me how to shoot. I don't need to go. Some of you probably came here thinking, I'm going to do pretty good. I shot guns. I go to the range and I put a milk jug up. and I sh Oh, we didn't shoot your rip. You're doing good. This is going to be, this thing's going to just mm. blow up. No, it's not. <laughs> Tactical. All right, now, it's pretty interesting. You're going to see like these little petals that came through. And look how far they penetrated. About that far. Oh, wow. About that far. That's all the penetration you get, boys. For a muscular guy, if you were to hit a muscular guy, that wouldn't go very far. What I'm looking for is the main body of it. It's just, it's disintegrated. <clears throat> no, it should be in here. Yeah, I'm there. saying it's disintegrated. It's, they come it's apart. Right down, right here. Yep, there it is. Yeah. There's the main plug. Now look how big it is. <laughs> Not very. Yeah. <laughs> is that considered frangible or is that? Yeah. So now you've got freaking nothingness moving through somebody's body. It's a, you know what I think this would be really good for? Out with your dog shooting snakes yeah you know shooting shit like that but if you miss you owe me a push up per miss you make day blur three but it's the p500 having three tons because it's got side plates in front of the rear so it's like yeah Ready, eyes and ears? Yeah. Eyes and ears. Stand fast. It's a poofy. So, of course, everything's contained. It's all right here. There's the whole projectile. Point blank body armor. This will stop up. This is rated up to 357 Magnum, 45 ACP. Blah 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 blah. Don't wash or dry. This. So th these are some nice. These are some nice groups. Where where you guys are shooting relatively quickly. I missed that one. Okay. That was my mic right there. So, target 13, target 13, the old, guy. the old guy that was using self-deprecating talk earlier, like I'm not that great and never shall be, just shot him clean. Must be that $11,000 single action double stack <laughs> Wilson combat. <laughs> Holstered. Holstered. There it is. My hand. Woo! I'm Keep them on the post. body of work that you have in your hand, that is not just shit that I think is interesting and cool, but it's stuff that some of the best people out there, go to the back of your book, who still got it? Towards the back is a list of authors, books, continued mm -hmm. reading. Let's go. Ten rounds. Keep them tight and right. Keep them
try that real quick. And that single action is super light, bro. Be, be very careful. Right in the center. 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 Who likes that gun? I, got yeah, I like that gun. I don't know why, man. Certain dudes, and you may be one of them, Glock-esque pistols. It's just your hand wants to send the rounds low left. I do it too. I do it. I do it too. I mean, it's just it's it's. I'm up that and I didn't yeah. squeeze the trigger until my sights. Were... These guns, the the metal frame is what I think it is. Let me see your blaster. Recommended reading. <laughs> Every one of them is a great book. Uh, every one of them is got information that is in here and a lot of them are easy reads too so I take a look at that not a sales pitch most of these companies I get not one red cent but they're all awesome people they're discount codes for all of these um, TA targets is what we've been shooting if you own property well it's gone now that's the that's steel it's a family-owned business like you dudes dad son and a son's best friend they've got a team of welders like they sell to the US Army And that stuff's all on our website too. If you guys need anything, you know how to call me. The point about keeping a record of your training before somebody... Part of this is being tired, but guess what? Might you be tired or wore out the day that some dude decides that you're prey? Is he gonna come find you when you are at your best? Nope. No. Oiled. No. You know, looking no. sharp. No, it's when you're dragging ass when you just left work and you're dead tired. And you're just like, I just want to get home and watch another episode of Friends on Netflix. Uh. Why did you do what you did? Well, I took a class with a dude and that was what he said. It's what the material said. Well, where did he get it? Right here. And everything that we gave you is vetted 1,000 times over by people way better at any of this than me. So I'm not saying hand that to your lawyer, but hand it to your lawyer if need be. I'm not... Uh, I'm not the end all be all, but the body of work in there is, like I said, it's bulletproof as far as where it came from. That said, your actions need to be righteous and justified. So let's keep ourselves out of trouble. Let's pay attention. Let's carry the gear that we trained with. That little 365, I'm more competent with right now than any gun I own because that's what I've trained with for the last six months. Keep training. You guys, I think, and if you can email me, hey, what was that thing we did? I forgot, I liked it. These little silly drills with a post-it note or whatever, we created it not because it's cheap, but because it's cheap and it works. And it's not because I'm cheap. I don't do anything cheap. That's the best steel money can buy. I'm shooting a $2,000 gun in the best holster and buy the best tires. And it's not because I'm rich. I don't like cheap shit especially when my life is on the line. I like this because it's cheap that I can go train. Not to beat a dead horse. You did awesome. I think you all did great. You should be proud of yourself for working in the rain and the sun, in the wind, tick infested fields, listening to some of the best jokes you've probably ever heard while maintaining composure. We can all do it. Yeah, we can. Cause she believes in me. Cause Mickey believes in me. He'll never know. It honestly means the world to me that I can drive across the country, eat good food, drink good beer, shoot. 800 or 1,000 rounds of ammo, lap with people. For real, that means that I am, I am completely and deeply honored and indebted, because if it wasn't for folks like you, I couldn't do it. And I hope that you got something out of it that was worth your two days away from family, your, your money, the wear and tear on your gun, your knees, your ears, your ego, thank you. You did awesome, man, you fought through it all weekend.
think about this as you go about your day in your life henceforward. You are the exact person, the exact shooter, the exact father, daughter, see how I dovetailed that in, son, teacher, business owner, soon to be cancer-free survivor, bank teller, lawyer. I was gonna try to come up with something good. Counselor. Counselor, yeah. Barrister. What are you again? Barrister. You're a student. You are that person that you, you whatever the outcome is, if you're a B plus or an A plus student, that's on you. Well, we finished up our two day at Rock Castle Shooting Center outside Mammoth Cave National Park. And I'm just driving off the property here and I thought I'd, I'd share some of this forest with you. Look at this. It's the first week of May. Everything's alive and green. They've got a vineyard on the property. Wild turkeys, deer. Today the, the staff here is planting sunflowers and some other, other plant life that will attract doves to the property because you can hunt here as well as 2,000 gorgeous acres. There's 57 miles of caves underground this property alone. And if you come visit here, you can go over to Mammoth Cave, one of the most amazing natural wonders here in the United States. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous area. Spoiler alert, we're going to be holding a man's weekend out here. It's not sexist, but we're going to be grilling steaks and drinking some good beers and shooting guns. Look for that in the future. Oh, did I mention they have a golf course, golf course here as well? Very nice 18-hole course that people come from all over to play because we're nestled in this beautiful area. Look at that. Yeah, we're crossing the course right now. There's a couple houses on the property as well as a hotel, a restaurant, and a lodge. It was built in the 1960s. And it looks it, but it's clean. It's tidy. Oh, sporting play course too. Pretty much anything you can think of They've got it out here. 2,000 acres of gorgeous forest with shooting, golf, relaxation, fresh air. And it's only a few minutes back to the interstate, back to 65. So my thinking is we're gonna utilize this place again because it's just too nice not to. Sure. Golf course here. Some more of the course. Beautiful, right? There's another, another range to the right of me and part of the golf course with the gorgeous scenery. Ear to smile. Ear to ear smile. We spent the weekend with a fantastic group of people we all got a good amount of training in 